This is Donkey Kong in three minutes. Let's get Donkey Punched! One time in 1981, an angry gorilla stole a princess and fended off a short Italian guy. That gorilla's name? Cranky Kong. Mind blown, right? Years pass. Cranky's grandson, Donkey Kong, wakes up and goes downstairs to his banana horn. He discovers his treasure pile of golden potassium has been stolen. Desperate to have a god <laughs> banana, Donkey Kong journeys all over the island looking for his crocodile nemesis, King K. Rule, who presumably has them. With the help of his Kong family and some not geographically appropriate animal pals, Donkey Kong makes it to K. Rule's pirate ship. DK is met by K. Rule and his Kremlin baddies. DK and K. Rule fight it out in traditional jungle warfare. Donkey Kong is victorious and the banana horde is filled with yellow phalluses once again. Time passes. King K. Rule, upset with being so easily thwarted, goes to DK's island and kidnaps him. Diddy goes to Donkey's place and finds a ransom note left by K. Rule. K. Rule offers Donkey Kong back in exchange for the banana horde. Okay guys, the bananas cannot be that good. Diddy and ain't having that and grabs his friend Dixie Kong and the two leave in search for King K. Rule once again. But this time it's to rescue somebody we actually care about and not some stupid bananas. Diddy and Dixie travel to Crocodile Island, find K. Rule and defeat him. K. Rule releases Donkey Kong and escapes. Soon after, Diddy and Dixie discover a secret area known as the Lost World. They find K. Rule hiding in Crocodile Core in a hidden geyser at the heart of Crocodile Isle in a log in a hole in the bottom of the sea. They beat him once again. K. Rule is sent hurling into the geyser plugging it up. The geyser explodes and Crocodile Isle is sunk into the bottom of the ocean. Huzzah for destroying ecosystems! The Kongs watch as K. Rule makes his escape on a tiny sailboat. Diddy and Dixie start dating. Wait, aren't they related? Ew. One year later, Donkey and Diddy go missing somewhere in the northern cremosphere. Of course they did. Dixie gets worried and goes off in search of them with her cousin Kitty Kong. They travel to Castle Chaos. A robot named Chaos is thought to be the new leader of the Kremlings. Dixie and Kitty beat Chaos. Chaos explodes, and Donkey and Diddy pop out of the robot. They learn that Chaos was being controlled by King K. Rule, who now goes by the name Baron K. Rulenstein. Dixie and Kitty beat K. Rulenstein, but he escapes. Dixie's and Kitty's quest takes them to the volcanic island of Krematoa. They meet Boomer, an ex-member of the Brothers Bear, an organization of bears in the northern Kremosphere. Boomer shows Dixie and Kitty the way to K. Rulenstein's personal submarine. The Kongs find K. Rulenstein on board and battle him again, and he escapes again. Again. Oh, come on! Shortly afterward, Dixie and Kitty meet the Banana Bird Queen. The Queen is tied to a barrier controlled by K. Rulenstein. The Queen tells the Kongs if they can return her children to her, she'll personally take care of K. Rulenstein herself. Dixie and Kitty obviously agree. Dixie and Kitty rescue the Bird Queen's children in a cave. The Queen chases K. Rulenstein, who is trying to escape in a hovercraft. The Banana Bird Queen drops a giant eggshell on him. K. Rulenstein is trapped inside. The Kongs gather around the egg and repeatedly knock on it. K. Rulenstein goes mad forever. Jesus, that's dark. Hi, I'm Stephanie with Arcade Cloud. Stick around because we've got more Nintendo themed video games and threes heading your way. Up next, the entire Smash Brothers chronology in three minutes. This is the Super Smash Brothers story in three minutes. Let's begin. The World of Trophies, a universe inhabited by lifelike sculptures of the galaxy's greatest heroes and villains, and ruled by the deity known only as the Master Hand. Master Hand brings the trophies to life and creates a tournament for them to battle in. He renames the trophies Smashers and watches from afar as they fight. Angry about the meaning of their creation, the Smashers rebel. One by one, the Smashers fight and defeat Master Hand. But upon their victory, without his power, they revert back to sculptures. Master Hand is revived by his twin entity, Crazy Hand, and together they continue collecting trophies. In order to trick the sculptures into believing that they are the real heroes, rather than mere duplicate, they copy the homeworlds of the original heroes and insert them into the world of trophies. Master Hand and Crazy Hand bring the Smashers back to life and once again force them to fight. The Smashers rebel and fight back against Master Hand and Crazy Hand. The Smashers defeat them and this time win the ability to continue their life without the continued magic of the hands. Master Hand goes into hiding and Crazy Hand disappears. As Master Hand plots what to do with his collection, he is captured by a celestial entity known as Taboo. Taboo is the ruler of an empty shadow dimension known as the Subspace. He concocts his own plan to populate the subspace by stealing Master Hand's collection of trophies. Taboo targets the fighters one at a time and slowly devours the world of trophies with his influence. He attacks the Isle of Ancients to secure their technology. The Halber 
Warbird for a transport vessel and manipulates Master Hand to order Wario, Bowser, and Ganondorf to do his bidding. King Dedede invents a device to protect Smashers from becoming trophies indefinitely. Taboo begins his assault on Mario, Kirby, Peach, and Zelda. The attack fails and the group is separated as they begin their missions. Wario attacks, turns Peach into a trophy, and escapes. Bowser fights Fox, Diddy Kong, and Donkey Kong. He turns Donkey Kong into a trophy and returns to Ganondorf. King Dedede learns of Wario and Bowser's kidnapping plots. In order to keep the other heroes safe, DDD begins kidnapping them himself. The heroes learn of DDD's plan, but assume that he's working with Bowser and Wario. DDD places his brooch devices on the trophies to protect them. Bowser attacks his castle, and DDD is turned into a trophy. Battles continue to rage. Smashers become trophies and revert back to their original state. Finally, Bowser and Ganondorf discover Master Hand is being used by Taboo. The Smashers attempt to fight Taboo, but are all turned into trophies. The Smashers wearing DDD's devices are revived, and together, they release the other trophies. All the fighters attack Taboo and defeat him with the help of Sonic. The trophies continue living and battling in the world of trophies in peace and harmony. Master Hand and Crazy Hand return and attempt to gain control of their collection. In the heat of battle, Master Hand reveals his true self as the Master Core. Despite his true power, he is defeated once and for all and retreats from the world of trophies. Now, finally free of their oppression, the Smashers establish their own society and continue to create and invite new trophies and worlds on their own. Smash Brothers had an actual storyline? Who knew? Up next, Mega Man in three minutes. This is the story of the classic Mega Man games, 1 through 10, in 3 minutes. Let's begin. In the early 2000s, two brilliant scientists, Dr. Light and Dr. Wily, begin development on advanced cybernetic robotics. Their research leads them to create artificial intelligence in their first human-like cyborg, Proto Man. In order to ensure their own safety, they program into their creation the three fundamental laws of robotics. Proto Man is deemed a success. Light and Wily begin mass-producing cyborgs for public use. Proto Man malfunctions and considers himself a failure. He leaves the lab to find his place in the world. Light and Wily replace Proto Man with two cyborgs named Rock and Roll. Upon their success, Dr. Light is granted the Nobel Peace Prize. Furious of Light's newfound fame, Wily reprograms their creations and flees to start his own robot army. Rock volunteers to fight Wily's imminent threat and Light turns him into the fighting robot Mega Man. Megaman defeats Wily's robot masters and returns them to Dr. Light. Using the blueprints of Light's designs, Wily returns with his new robots, but is once again defeated by Mega Man. Wily then offers a truce to Light, and the two begin to work together on a new robot system. They create Gamma, a massive robotic pacifist made with the intention of deterring crime. Wily betrays Light, steals and reprograms Gamma, and sets it loose on the world. Mega Man intervenes and stops Gamma and Wily. To cover his tracks for his next revenge plot, Dr. Wily kidnaps the daughter of another brilliant scientist and blackmails the scientist into attacking Mega Man. Mega Man teams up with Proto Man and they defeat Wily together. Wily creates Dark Man, a cyborg identical to Proto Man, and kidnaps Dr. Light. Mega Man discovers Dark Man and Proto Man are not the same robot and rescues Dr. Light. Realizing that he can't defeat him head on, Wily kidnaps a billionaire and impersonates him to establish a robot fighting tournament. While Mega Man fights in the tournament, Wily creates the evil robot of Bass in secret. Mega Man wins the tournament and turns Wily into the authorities. Bass breaks Wily out of prison and Mega Man is sent to defeat him. Upon Wily's defeat, Mega Man threatens to go against his programming and nearly kills Wily. Bass intervenes and saves Wily before anything drastic occurs. A few months later, two celestial robots battle in space and crash into Earth's atmosphere. Both Dr. Wily and Dr. Light find one of the two robots and reprogram them for good and evil. Mega Man sets out to defeat Wily before he can set his evil evil robot loose on the world. Mega Man succeeds. Wily then begins turning Dr. Light's mass-produced robots against their owners in secret. He succeeds in turning the world against Dr. Light and has the inventor imprisoned. Mega Man defeats Wily's evil robots and clears Dr. Light's name. One year later, a cybernetic virus attacks the robot population. Dr. Light and Wily team up once again to put an end to it. And then Mega Man discovers the virus is Wily's creation all along. Wily is defeated and a cure is created to save all of the robots. Years pass. Wily dies, and Dr. Light creates one last robot before passing away himself. Before bringing it to life, he instead seals it away for future generations to discover. Last but not least, everyone's lovable, whatever it is that Kirby is. Here's Kirby in three minutes. 
This is the story of Kirby's video games, not the television shows, in three minutes. Let's begin! In the kingdom of Dreamland, the treacherous King DDD goes about stealing the food of all the world's inhabitants so he can have a large midnight feast. What a dick! The kingdom, lacking a hero, finds one in a mysterious warrior who crashes from the sky. Kirby! Kirby takes on DDD and his armies and returns the food to Dreamland citizens. That doesn't sound like Kirby. Kirby is considered a hero while DDD plots his revenge. Before he is able to, a creature named Nightmare curses the Fountain of Dreams, a mystical relic that allows all Dreamland citizens to dream. <coughs> DDD steals the Fountain's Star Rod to stop everyone from having nightmares, but Kirby steals it back. Kirby places the Star Rod in the Fountain and inadvertently reawakens Nightmare. The two battle. Kirby wins, and Kirby and DDD put aside their rivalry. A benevolent force known as Dark Matter possesses King DDD and steals the Rainbow Bridges. The connection between Dreamland. Kirby stops DDD and defeats Dark Matter. Dark Matter returns with his leader, Zero. But Kirby joins forces with his animal friends and defeats them. Dark Matter escapes to the planet Ripple Star and shatters the planet's protective crystal. Kirby gathers the crystal shards and flies to Ripple Star. There, he defeats Dark Matter, but not before the villain creates a planet called Dark Star where Zero is resurrected. Kirby travels to Dark Star and defeats Zero once and for all. Meta Knight discovers that the Mirror World the universe that exists in an alternate universe of Dreamland skies has become corrupt. He investigates, but is attacked by a dark version of himself. Dark Meta Knight slices Kirby into four separate versions of himself, and Kirby joins Meta Knight in the battle to save Mirror World. The two team up and defeat Dark Mind, the force creating the chaos in Mirror World. Before they can celebrate, a witch named Draish Dra Drasia, a witch named Drasia appears and curses Dreamland, turning it into a waste land of paint. Kirby's limbs are taken away and he is forced to save Dreamland without them. Jesus. He eventually finds Drasia and defeats her, reverting Dreamland back to normal. As Kirby attempts to finally relax with a piece of cake, it is stolen by the Squeaks, a team of thieving rats who want to release the evil entity known as Dark Nebula. Dark Nebula breaks free, but Kirby battles him and wins. Kirby accidentally eats a tomato possessed by the evil Yin Yarn and is banished to Patchland, a planet made of yarn and thread. Gee, that sounds adorable. The most adorable curse ever. He teams up with the Prince of Patchland to restore order, then returns to Dreamland to save it from the rule of Yin Yarn. With the help of the Prince, Kirby defeats Yin Yarn and reverts Dreamland back to its original state. Then, Dreamland falls under the possession of the evil queen Sectonia, but Kirby stops her from destroying the kingdom with a magic beanstalk. In the final attack on Dreamland, a monster known as Dark Crafter proceeds to possess a witch to steal all the colors of Dreamland in order to create new planets. Kirby chases after the Dark Crafter and defeats it, restoring all the color to Dreamland and living happily ever after for now. And there you have it. If you like this video, subscribe to RK Cloud and be sure to like us on Facebook. There's a link in the description below. See you next time.